Hey folks, welcome to this week's episode of Carl's Off the Grid. This week we are in northern Wisconsin and we're going to be targeting walleyes. We had a full moon last night, so I think that might play a little bit of havoc on us. But uh, nevertheless, we're going to throw some lines in the water and see what we can come up with this week on Carl's Off the Grid. Okay, folks, I'm gonna explain how this tip-up works. I realize a lot of my viewers um, aren't from Wisconsin, uh, and a lot of the viewers aren't even from the United States. So uh, you may not be familiar with how we catch fish here in the States during the winter time, but this is how it goes. At the bottom of the line here, I have a hook on um, that will put through a fin of a uh, minnow but right now we're just gonna concentrate on setting up the tip up, so I'm not gonna put the minnow on. This is a lead weight that will take the line all the way down to the bottom of the lake. And walleye are the type of, are the type of fish, ooh, good catch, where they lay on the bottom of the lake or they coast the bottom of the lake and their eyes are looking up and they're looking for any bait fish that might swim over them. So right now this line completely hit the bottom of the lake. I wind the spool until it's all the way tight. And once I can feel that it's tight, there's no slack. I pull it out of the water, holding this lever so the line doesn't unwind. And that right there is roughly about a foot and a half. What I do is I take a little marker. In this case, I'm using just a really tiny bobber and I put it on the line there. And then that way we know exactly where we have to reel the tip up into and stop when we're setting the minnow on. So let's pretend right now I took the line out. I put my minnow on the hook. You drop the minnow into the lake. And then I'll wind this line up until I get to that little bobber. And then, like I showed you earlier, oops. Let's set it down. You set it up like that. When a fish comes and he hits the middle and starts to take line out, the flag goes up and you know you have a fish on. Okay, we've been out here already for, uh, I think about 45 minutes. And normally I just let these minnows soak. Okay, this guy's real lively, but every once in a while, it's a good idea to go ahead and uh, to lift uh, the minnow up and out of the water, just because if you happen to be in real heavy weeds, uh, you don't wanna have him get snagged in the weeds and then be sitting there forever all night, hoping that you get a fish on there and then nothing ever happens. So that guy's doing good, he came back. 
the hole's already starting to ice up. It's only about, uh, I think it's about nine degrees out here right now, Fahrenheit. So I'm not sure what that translate out, translates out to in Celsius, but it's, let's just say it's darn cold. I do you guys see what I see? We got our first flag. So before we rush out there, <clears throat> I'm gonna grab the minnows and we'll take a slow walk out here. That flag just went up, so I will give it a minute or two for the fish to, uh, to take the bait. Okay, now the right way of doing this is I'll slowly pull this in until I can feel some resistance. And then once you feel the resistance, you set the hook. All right. And we got our first walleye. All right, there you go. First fish through the ice. Okay, so it's exactly five o'clock and that's our first walleye. And that fish measured exactly 15 inches, so 15 inches is legal, um, only allowed three fish on this lake. There's a slot limit. They're encouraging people to take smaller fish. Um, anything over 20 inches has to go back. So that's a good eating size fish. So we got our first one under our belt and now we'll start keeping a little bit closer watch on these tip ups and hopefully we get a couple more. So last night it got a little bit late. I ended up only catching that one walleye, but that one walleye is good enough for a meal. So I promised you catching a cook. So that's what we're gonna do. I went ahead and got some maple ready. We're gonna let this heat up and get real hot and turn into a bunch of good cooking coals. And then we'll go ahead and we'll show you our favorite recipe for walleye over the fire. So there's a couple different ways that I like to, to make this. And I'm gonna do the most simple way uh, today because I don't wanna spend a whole lot of time with food prep. I wanna go ahead and get some wood ready, some fire starter and stuff for the cabin for the rest of the winter because I'm running a little bit low on supplies. But what I've done is I've put a little bit of milk inside of uh, this bowl with, I usually mix up a couple eggs on top of it. And I'm sure everybody's saying, well, this is the exact same way I fry them. Well, I'm no different than anybody else. We'll mix this up pretty good. And the reason why I add a little bit of milk is for some reason it helps with uh, the flakiness of the, of the breading that we're gonna put on here. Um, you can add salt or pepper to this if you wish. I'm not gonna because what I'm using today is shore lunch. That already comes with all the seasonings in it. If you don't have a breading like shore lunch, what you can use is, uh, I've used flour and um, just add salt and pepper to it. I have used cracked 
Saltine crackers, that works pretty good. Do not add salt to it if you're using saltines, obviously. And I've even used Ritz, Ritz crackers when I'm in a jam. And what we're gonna do is we are gonna deep fry these things. I'll get a pan going on the wood as soon as uh, we, I say wood, we'll get a pan going on the coals. You don't ever wanna really cook over an open fire. Be patient, wait for it to um, turn the coals. And when you got a good solid coal base, it'll be easier to bring that oil that we're gonna be deep frying these in up to a, a boil and to cooking temperature. There's a, a trick to how you do this. And any self-respecting northerner that's cooked fish before knows this, but uh, I'll repeat it to you people who maybe have not experienced this type of cooking, but you always keep one hand dry and the other hand you cook with. I can see the oil's bubbling, so that's ready to go. These walleye fillets. We'll go ahead and we'll real generously put that breading on. And it goes straight into the pan. All right, we'll give it a couple minutes. As soon as it turns golden brown, we'll take it off the fire and take it indoors and enjoy ourselves a walleye dinner. Okay, folks, and there you have it. Fresh walleye out of the lake and uh, onto the plate. I already said my prayer, and we're gonna accompany this walleye dinner with a nice, refreshing, wholesome Mountain Dew. Um, what more organic can you get than do right off the mountain and fresh walleye out of the lake? Mmm. It was really good. All right. Well, I'm not going to make you suffer and watch me eat this fish. So I'll just let you know. Um, that's going to wrap it up for this video. I'd like to thank you for coming along and checking out uh, the catch and cook you know we really didn't have much luck on the lake but uh, just being out in the outdoors a lot of time is reward enough it was pretty exciting to be able to sit on the lake and for those of you who don't have the luxury of living in a cold area it's a beautiful thing at nighttime when you hear the lake uh, it kind of sings to you it moans and cracks and you hear all sorts of stuff and your first time on the ice if you've never been there before, it's a little bit scary, but after you've been there a while, it's just beautiful. So uh, I'd like to thank my subscribers, and uh, you guys have been here for a long time, and I appreciate your support. Thank the new subscribers that are with us, and we'll catch you guys next week on Carl's Off the Grid. Bon appetit. Mm. Nothing better. Fresh walleye.